Plastic Comedy with Hilary Herbert and producer extraordinaire, never is wrong, always is right, Josh Edelman. Uh, I think we found the clip. Uh, let's shout out to the feet people. I'm gonna. So the feet people have uh, requested that my feet are here, forward, and then in frame. Is that possible? I have little. We're gonna do. Here's the thing, feet people. As a dancer, I train six days a week, and I got dance feet in that. Even though I got a pedicure on whatever day I did that a few days ago, you know, they get, they're beaten up. So I have my cute little, some of you, some of them like the nylon-y things. Some of them want bare feet. You're all, here's what you're going to do. If you want specifics, you're going to pay for it. We're at that point. Nikki was right. Let's get serious. Are my feet in frame now? Yes. Ha ha. They're... Frame-ish. Okay, now does my face still look good though? Yeah, yeah. Don't and there's not a line coming down like this? Lighting. That obviously if I had, I would have corrected surgically immediately. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see anything. Okay. Okay. So much to cover. Okay, it's warm. So we've got... Okay, so we did... We were, we were supposed to release the... First two minutes of this pod, Hillary's stripping. <laughs> Welcome. We were supposed to release the our first surgeon interview this morning. And when I got sent the clip, the professional clip, that we were going to post to promote it, as we always do, the sound of my microphone was to me significantly different than the sound of Dr. Calvert's microphone which sounds great obviously if it's going to be one way or the other that's the order we would want it to be in but I did pay a lot of money for a, a professional sound guy to come so I could have the lapel mic so Josh said this is how we started the episode Josh is always right Josh when we started when I said I want to go do the interview in Dr. Calvert's office Josh said well I'll bring my mics these are great mics and I said I don't want us it just didn't seem like the right setting to have this kind of mic whereas what I'm going to get to next weekend these are perfect this is going to be great so I was like, I want the lapel mics. And I was adamant about it. Josh said, you know, they're a real pain in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, also, can you just turn that light off back there? Turn it the off? Yeah, yeah. We had it on last week. Yeah, I know. But you're sitting further back okay. today. So you'll you'll be upset. <laughs> so I won't like the episode until about two and a half minutes in. Okay. So I'm good. There's yep, no yep, weird yep, lines yep, nope, that nope, make nope. me look like I'm prematurely aging. Nope. So... The so I get the clip and I can't bring myself, you know, I, I don't I don't think I'm so much of a perfectionist as I am just someone who wants things right, you know. And sometimes I think this is what I'm going to start doing when I start paying for things. When I continue to pay for things, I'm going to say, OK, yes, that's your rate or that's how much it costs. How much does it cost to have it done right? Because <laughs> I want to pay that amount of money. I, if it's double or triple what you're telling me the number is right now, bring it on. I want it done right. And so it is very frustrating to have a timeline of something coming out. Do you think if I if he can send the, the audio file fixed that we could get it out Sunday night and do another like Sunday special? This weekend is so hard crazy. for me. I have, okay, so here's why I'm going to tell you why. So it, I might... I might listen to it and put the audio out as if he, is. The only thing I don't want to do is put Sunday it out night, and like go, what time? sorry about the audio, anytime. I mean, if he sends me a version of it that's good, like tonight, I'll have it out by... Tomorrow morning's pretty much like when I need it by to get it up Sunday night for sure. Okay, I'll check in with him when I leave. Because once tomorrow afternoon happens i'm like gotcha i'm I like totally understand overwhelmed because you have this episode to edit too yeah so <laughs> so 
yeah, like by tomorrow, like like I could have it out at the same time I'm done with this, which is like bordering on midnight. <laughs> you know, I think it's fine because the the people that are going to watch this episode are completely different from the people that watch the, are going to watch his the, the people that are going to watch his episode are anyone he shares it with the the feet people aren't going to watch it. Gotcha, gotcha. So, well, at least he sounds good. I know. I mean, <laughs> the last thing you want is them to watch to watch a thing and be like, "Well, why does she look great and sound great, and I'm looking terrible and sounding bad?" You know, the best part of uh, the the, or I should say, the silver lining, or, or or at least I'm grateful for, is that after I at four in the morning when I saw the clip and heard the audio. I was able to fall back asleep, and I didn't think I was going to be able to fall back asleep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just grateful. So here's my a big idea on top of my big idea. So my big idea wasn't just interviewing the surgeons. My big idea is that I wanted to get a little more playful with it. I wasn't exactly sure how I was going to do that, what the creative angle was going to be. But when I found out about the months ago, when I found out about the um, conference coming up in Beverly Hills, I was like, I can't. I've got to use this to my advantage if there's going to be so many surgeons at one conference and the conferences are kind of like, it's a, you know, it's like, I feel like they're going to camp, you know, there's like a more fun energy. And so I was like, okay, well, I'm, you're making me nervous, Josh. Why are we changing it? I don't know. You make me nervous. Do I look okay? Yeah, I think so. Oh, God. Did <laughs> you just create a new line? No. If I have a line going from here all the way down to here, I don't have that in person. Oh, Josh. Oh, you're freaking me out, man. <laughs> you are freaking me out. Stop touching the lights. Okay, no, no more touching the lights. For goodness sake. I'll just blow it out. Then you'll have no lines. Okay. Cool. You'll, have, you'll have two dots. <laughs> <laughs> the only line will be this thing moving right here because you'll be... <laughs> it's all you guys need, isn't it? <laughs> so, so then I was like, well... I'll just animate faces onto your feet and have those talk. <laughs> <laughs> and then your podcast Michael will really Blaustein blow up. Michael Blaustein would like that. Okay. So, but I can't get into the conference because you need to be a medical professional. So I was like, well, okay, how do I think outside the box here? And a couple of months ago, I was like, oh, I'll like TMZ it on the street. And as they're coming in and out, grab them and ask some questions. And I was like, oh, I mean, I guess it's a good workaround. It's an okay idea, but I don't know that I have it in me to do that. At least not until I've sort of established that that's kind of the thing I'm doing yet. It's a little like, uh, it, I just wasn't sold. I didn't sell myself on the idea. And I couldn't tell if it was because I was being a You feel cat. like someone like chasing senators down uh, Which the I'm hall. totally okay with. That's <laughs> not the part that makes me uncomfortable. The part that makes me uncomfortable is that it, I'm not there yet. I don't know enough of them. That's a more, I want to be able to say, I just, it's just, I'm not ready for that yet. And that was my feel. And it kept, and I going, okay, well, I guess I just won't touch on this conference. And then the other night, I, and this wouldn't have occurred to me if my road hasn't, hadn't been closed the day before and the day of Dr. Calvert's interview. So I stayed in the hotel in Beverly Hills and had my little staycation and everything went well and the time, everything worked out. So then I was like, oh, it's at the Four Seasons in Beverly Hills. Just rent a room. Be a guest. And I'm, that I'm, have every right to be in the hotel, right? I can't go into the lectures, which I really, or I guess I don't know how many lectures it is. It's a mix of injector people, which I have no interest in anything with, but unless I'm talking to you face to face and then hi. Uh, and then I think there's some cadaver labs. I don't know how many lectures, but if there are lectures, I want to be in there. I, it's, I don't think I'll have a chance this time, but in the future. So then I was like, okay, let me rent some rooms. So I rented, because I was like, oh, well, what if it sells out? Because it's a conference, you know, and like maybe it's all whatever, like a, like a wedding in Vegas. And so I rented two rooms for me and Stacy. 
hers much smaller than mine only because I want to host some interviews. So well, then I was like, we want everyone to know who's boss. <laughs> I want <to laughs> assert my dominance. And uh, no, because I wanted to have a room where people would come to and there's room to move around and the bed is not in the same room as the couch, you know. So don't want anyone getting the wrong ideas. <laughs> well, I'm giving some people the wrong ideas. Cause let me keep going. I mean, it just keeps getting better. So then I reached out to you and Stacy, whom are whom who I never know who are both available, I think it's who, who are both available. Now I need, I'm gonna have, so Stacy and I, but then I got, I got skittish on the idea because I get so excited about stuff and I reached out to you and Stacy and you were both available and that was great, but it's never my height of enthusiasm, right? It's never my like, you guys, you won't believe this. And then I'm home alone going like, maybe I'm such a silly goose, you know? Maybe I'm doing something that's just so ridiculous. But then I'm always like, wait, we're only here for one round. Let me be a little ridiculous. This is fun. This is going to be really fun. So then I had posted a story of a doctor and said some flattering things about him. And one of my, uh, fr my friend's sisters, a, fr a friend of uh, we don't hang out, you know, my friend's sister, who I see here and there, replied to that story. And she was like, ooh, I, I pick him, you know, saying like she liked him. And so I shared that, I guess. Anyway, he and tagged him and he responded. And I was like, hey, like, I'm being serious. This is a very pretty single, you know, woman who's, you know, I will vouch for in that way. I, I haven't confirmed with him yet, but then he started. So I sent her Instagram to him. And he started following her. And she woke up this morning and was like, Hillary, why is he following me now? And I was like, he. So then I was like, hey, so-and-so to the woman. I was like, hey, I have this idea where I already booked, I said, I told her, I was like, I'm holding an event at, at the Four Seasons on Saturday. You should come. The he Four Seasons does not know about this event. <laughs> <laughs> in any way i'm gonna get like a big i'm gonna be so fun about it okay so so i was like hey come on saturday i'm gonna have an after party i'm gonna do some interviews he's gonna be there and she was like okay this is late april late april this is next weekend did you okay well, well keep going this is no, you sent me this is the 23rd i need you on the 23rd I'm double checking that you said I'm positive you said oh damn I don't know why I thought you meant April but correction but, to the opening of this episode but, Josh is not but, always right but I can make sure someone who will do a good job will be there okay great so <laughs> sorry sorry no I, no no I'm, but I'm, I need somebody. I'm in Palm Springs I need that somebody weekend. everyone's out of town Hannah's out of town Leah's out of town I was like all my moral support is is somewhere else that weekend I'm really digging i don't know why I, I was so it's sure fine. you meant april i was shocked when you said you're available i was like you're available next weekend okay fine we'll work through it so i've put a match together mm -hmm. let alone come up with this really fun idea so stacy and i are going to go to the hotel on yes. can i ask one more logistical sure. question sure. do you need them daytime or nighttime I believe I've got to check in because I don't have a schedule of events, but usually it, it, nighttime is the answer. Okay. Well, I was going to say Nikki could probably do it, but she's not available nighttime on the 23rd. I need, a, I need an evening, an evening person. Because they'll have this, like, they'll have, a, they'll have their own little closing gathering party is how I see these events tend mm -hmm. to go. But they're, you know, nah, nah, nah. I don't know what that means. They're fine. I'm going to have the after party. And then the interviews are going to be casual. You know, oh, come sit down on the couch. And people will be, I'll have drinks and snacks and uh, some music. And it'll be lively and fun. Do I have karaoke? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I might. So I've set up a, a romantic connection. I'm going to host... A fun after party with interviews with surgeons asking fun questions because they have 
a woman with like the professional I think it's Lamka is the short uh you know microphone down at the event from what I could see from seeing past events but she's not asking the inappropriate questions yeah 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 this you is where know. you go this is where you go to get the this is where you go to get the dirt and if I am interviewing you I will be nice to you. That's why I really want to make sure that the Dr. Calvert interview comes out so people can see that and go, oh, she's capable of, you know, being polite. You like and her, she likes you. Yeah, you like me, <laughs> I like you. Guaranteed. Yeah, let's make this happen, right? That's the business plan. You like me, I like you. Uh, and, and even so, but then I was so, I was looking at the list of people that are scheduled there. to be there. There is a conflict. I already knew this and I was like, oh, man. But there's a conflicting conference in Texas the same weekend for all the rhinoplasty guys. And all the rhinoplasty guys are going to that. And that's a handful of men that I've always spoke well about are not going to be at this conference. There are a few people at this conference that might not want to might not want to come up to the hotel room. But we would love to have you if you're willing to. I think I'm going to see if Gregory's available to to work the door and you have to show your conference pass to get in. Because I'm going to have to give... But then you might get mad at Gregory if like some great doctor comes and doesn't remember their pass and Gregory stops him. It'll all be fine. (laughs) Everything is going to be fine. I'm going to say if they look like a doctor, let them in. If they look like an injector, I have zero questions for you. I have a lot of questions for you, but I, you don't want me to ask them to your face on camera. Okay. So we have that. So fun, right? Mm-hmm. Super fun. I know. I'm sad. I'm sad that I'm. I'm it, just right. You'd want to be there. It's going to be yeah, really yeah. fun. I throw a good party, especially in a hotel room. Literally, I was like, "Oh, look, the two days I have available: April 22nd and 23rd." Uh, <laughs> oh, right. Okay, so this is what... So Stacy and I, I have rooms for Friday and Saturday night. Friday night, I'm just... We're going to be little mice sneaking around causing trouble. I'm going to just catch people in the hallway and spread the word and maybe do little sort of iPhone quick bits or something. And then Saturday night will be the official after party in the hotel room with the interviews Mm -hmm. so i'll get the get the get people interested in talking about it friday night through the act of shenanigans it's going to be so much fun so exciting what else do we have let me look at my notes oh spray tan update love on the spectrum australia okay let's start with okay spray tan update uh well here's the thing Liking it, sometimes loving it, sometimes tricky. As a pole dancer, I rub my skin in certain areas and that leaves it um, to rub off unevenly. Um, My groin area was a little darker than the rest of it. I'm not sure why. She spent a little extra time there. Spray tanning? Yeah. I got a spray tan. What did you think I was talking about? I don't know. I got confused. Okay. So I thought you were. <laughs> so you were saying, because you were saying that when you dance, you rub areas. So areas are darker than others. And then you were like, my groin area no, was very areas dark. Get li- it wears and I was off. like, okay, areas get I guess we lighter. Know what Hillary's no, been doing. Don't, no, you <laughs> specifically don't rub your groin on the pole when you're dancing. Oh, okay. it was, it's, a, it's bad form. Uh, so spray tan, you know, I used to do it all the time. I'm also also going to lighten my hair. Not lighten, lighten, but then I keep looking at it and I go, oh, it looks so good. I don't know. I always do that. Anytime I'm going to change anything, I fall back in love with what I'm going to change and then I don't want to do it. But I like to do like a spring look, summer look, and then go back to more of a fall, winter look. And this is my... Through spray tanning? No, through through any, the, like the hair color. The hair lightens up a little bit. When it, for spring, summer, the nail polish changes. So like red for fall and winter, hot pink. 
certainly for summer. You get like your boobs bigger for summer. Since We're going to get my boobs bigger for the rest of my life. On display, but then you get them smaller for winter. Cause. So, exactly. So, okay. So, Love on the Spectrum, Australia. Josh, do you think that... What? You know, I've never watched any of the shows. I'm not I'm not oh, asking yeah, yeah. you about the shows. Do you think that all of the, is it professing that I do of, is that the word? Professing. Of what I want and what I need. Manifesting. No, the speaking it out into the yeah. Try, or yeah. I guess it's professing the attempt to manifest. Yeah, I think professing <laughs> the act, uh, the the physical act, act. The, the attempt. Professing claim that one has a quality or feeling, especially when this is not the case. Yes, professing. I believe that's what I'm doing <laughs> because I watch. You know, I say all these things. Can we also remind everybody? That what I say on the podcast, the reason I'll say one thing one week. Declaring, I think. Declaring. Maybe, my declaration. My declaration. I declare. I hereby decree that I'm in search of a boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> they must be wealthy, intelligent. Right. So all my declarations. Under 300 pounds. Are prof- I didn't say that. <laughs> uh all my declarations are professing. Does that work? Do you think I do that? I think it's two parts. Do you think I... Doth thou profess too much? Yes, doth profess too much. So do you think I do that either consciously or unconsciously to avoid any form of actual intimacy? I don't know. I think, you know, well, we want. Well, when I'm watching Love on the Spectrum Australia, <laughs> I go, you know what I really want? They have this couple who were, and I've had, I felt this at in certain relationships and or at certain phases in relationships, but like, the best friend you know the person that you're just like this is who you can feel the safest with it's never worked out for me i always i always go for the best friend and then and then it it crumb it just ends up in disaster yeah (laughs) the best friend's the most disaster don't right live with your best friend don't fuck your best friend because that'll (laughs) the best friend is yeah the best friend's the biggest disaster one that'll hurt the most and everyone's like, I'm marrying my best friend. I was like, yeah. ugh, you don't have any other friends? <laughs> right. So that's why. Your best friend is hot. <laughs> yeah. Maybe just have like a, right. Especially when it's like, there's this couple on on love is, did, was I saying love is blind? I think you said love is on the spectrum. Love on the spectrum. Okay. Love on the spectrum Australia. I just finished the first season and I get to start the second season in Hyperbaric today. I'm so excited. So the first season ends with this super cute couple who he's a little more affected by things, by the, by some autism aspects than she is. And she's very supportive in it, but they go together perfectly. And there's, it's just so supportive and you get to see their relationship and it's blossoming and then he proposes to her for the season finale and it is you wouldn't have seen it coming at the first episode because he was spoiler alert oh spoiler alert it's been out for a long time I think I mean yeah well there you go do the feet people watch love on the spectrum maybe are there a lot of feet on the spectrum feet (laughs) Feet. They watch Feet on the Spectrum. I don't know. There's definitely a porn parody, Feet on the Spectrum. Uh, <laughs> we have an episode called Feet on the Spectrum. Do we? Yeah. Thanks, oh, Josh. I guess you renamed it. I do rename them. Like you, <laughs> you, 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 like I renamed Dr. Calvert's, even though we didn't post it yet, uh, Dr. J. Calvert, and you named it 
doctor doctor right yeah yeah, yeah. give me the news <laughs> I'll just leave the names blank. You can fill them in. Okay. You had been doing a good job early on, and then it sort of. I, swear, out. I'm not, I don't think I'm doing anything different than I was doing early on. Okay. Just sometimes, trying to sometimes they're just a little more clever. The doctor, doctor. I was like, I mean, I'm not sure what that, how that, how that's trying not to. You know, I don't want to offend. Well, that's what I was concerned about. That one, I was <laughs> the the he the he he, he the Superman uh, post I took down. Mm, you got paranoid. Uh, no, I asked him and he was like, you know, I'm just like a humble guy. I think it was too showboaty for him. Uh, 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 and uh, so I took it down because I absolutely do not want to offend or make anyone uncomfortable unless I'm intentionally making you uncomfortable. And then it's because I am risking that and fine with it. So I say a lot of things on the podcast and I talk. Sometimes they're true and honest. And sometimes I'm just playing around. And so the, like the party in the hotel room, you know, and like the episode like, oh, like surgeons are so hot. They are hot, but I'm not like attracted to any of them for the most part. So, you know, I just, I can't. I can't, here's, I don't even want to get into it. Okay, then don't. Okay, I won't. <laughs> what else we got? Oh, I got blocked. You got blocked? I got blocked by a woman who sells, there's a lot of people that sell, their business is selling product, is selling, you know, a, being like an influencer mm-hmm. for product. And... It's just so, whatever. I shared a story. I've gotten a little looser with, you know how you like share the stories and the person can see who shared them? I never look to see, I guess not a lot of people share my stories, but or not, or the posts. But a lot of people look. And so I started getting looser with directly sharing as opposed to screenshotting and trying to be a little behind the scenes about it. A little sneaky. A little, a little sneaky about it. I just don't need the, per, you know, it's, I, you know, there was a time where I didn't, and now it's like, oh, it's a little more fun if they see it, right? So I shared that this woman's selling, and I'll, Lema- can I say the name of a product that I don't like and say I don't like it? Is that okay? Yeah, I think that's okay. allowed. Lemare face cream, you know, and she's got all these followers. She's got plastic surgeons that follow her and she's selling this face cream that is paraffin and mineral oil i mean it is just an absolute bs marketing that's all it is sounds reasonable for her to block you yeah that's but so i it was my business and someone's like hey josh edelman sucks at his business no lamare isn't her business oh but she's 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 selling but she's 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 saying, I use this and I love it. So she's getting paid by them to say, I use this and I love it. And I'll get blocked by people who are in no way going to help me out in my, you know, yeah, yeah, burgeoning yeah, 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 career yeah. to say, you're full of shit. <laughs> you're, what you do for a living is selling your lack it's of integrity. A web of lies. What's that? It's a web of lies. It's just like... It's you sell it to women who then go, okay, I'm going to splurge on this. And you could buy those ingredients at CVS and throw it on your face and you'd have the same outcome. Nothing. It's just, ugh. And then I had, so yeah, like I piss them off. Have them block me. Like, please. I don't like you or what you represent or what you do. There, There's not a need for it. Find some other way to make money. That's how I feel about it. So she has, she does, I don't know if she was on the podcast. I had a consultation with a female plastic surgeon that I had rescheduled, I mean, maybe like three times, and then I finally just canceled it. They said, do you want to reschedule it? I said, no, just cancel it. I don't know if, I, if they charge me the fee and I lose it. I don't know. Just get me out of this situation. But like this plastic surgeon, I see on the woman who had blocked me before she blocked me, likes some of her posts 
I don't know. It just the whole game is if you're full of shit, and I think I've said this before on the podcast, if your marketing and your whole thing is being full of shit and lying so so the masses don't find out and they keep putting money in your pocket, I'm not you know, I'm not going to be someone you like. Right? Very comfortable with that. It's so much easier to go through life being honest, having integrity, and going, if anyone ever came to me with anything, being able to go either, you know, yes, I said that, and I agree with it, or yes, I did that, and that's who I am, or yes, I did that, or I said that, or what, whatever, and I fucked up, and I'm sorry. You're right. I don't like that about myself, or whatever it is. But people make entire lifestyles out of being false. And I don't think you can disconnect that from who you truly are as a person. And it's just fun to play around because they've all agreed to not tell on each other. You know, to a certain extent, everyone, all the plastic surgeons, all the beauty influencers, all the blah, 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 have all agreed that we're just going to do this. And Hillary will tell on you. Yeah, I'll tell on you. Because it's because it's not fair to vulnerable women who are looking for help and, and, and don't have the gift of discernment, aren't critical thinkers, f- feel so bad about themselves that they think if they keep purchasing things you know we don't like it when we talk about doing it to people's daughters to doing it to young girls but those young girls grow up and become women and they still have the same mental blocks and need someone to be honest with them and so you know I really like the honest people so we've got we like having the honest surgeons on our side oh that's something that came up that I realized that's what I got really self-conscious about is um it's not clear unless you're a fan. So this is what occurred to me. Mm-hmm. So I had posted like this Superman thing that I took down and I got really self-conscious because it occurred to me fully that if unless you're a super fan of the podcast and you listen to the whole story and my ongoing saga, either dead or alive, that Dr. Calvert wasn't my surgeon. And it's not even clear in the interview. It, it just was an, it was a flub on my part to not sort of set the stage for how we met really or that, you know, it, it, that I didn't know him through that. So are you worried that people are going to hire because they think he did your work? Or, or you well, just want you just want you thing. just want the. I've never. Oh, the, here's how we'll finish up. I've never. No one's ever asked me what I've had done. Mm-hmm. No one ever asked me what I had done. Because they don't think you've had anything done other than you're talking about it. Yeah. Because you get such good work done. Because I had such good work done. Or maybe everyone's like, Ugh, we can't go to Hillary's people. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Definitely so, not. so thank you, Josh. Wow, Josh throwing compliments. What a day. So it just it made me. I felt I've always never mentioned my surgeons by name because it just I assumed that and I think I assumed correctly that they don't, you know, to not involve them that way. So but then with the do you know what I mean like I fair is fair like credit do where credits do and then I got re- and I was like oh my god and I spent like an hour yesterday trying to make a video trying to like express that in like a post to be like because Dr. Calvert's going to share the interview and now it's going to be seen by this whole other group of people and they're not going to be fans of the podcast they're not going to have listened to the whole thing they're going to see me in a in one of our clips from weeks before talking about this surgeon that I think is hot and having like a fantasy of being murdered on the you know what I mean there's a lot of is that a clip that is a clip nice 
I know it's a good one. I like that one a lot. So I was like, oh my God, what do I do? And I, I, I spent an hour trying to like make a post that wasn't the cringiest thing ever trying to describe <laughs> it and I couldn't do it. Plus with the whole Superman post on top of everything. I know. <laughs> I know. I know. I'm just giving you shit. Oh no, it's so bad, Josh. I really was like, what do I do? Here's what I'm going to do. Here's what I'm going to do. And if I get rejected, fine. Add it to the list. So my surgeon will be at the uh, conference, at least for a period of time to do something. He's on the list of faculty, I think they call it. I don't know. People presenting, teaching. I'm not sure. We would love to have my surgeon come up to the after party and do the most flattering interview we could do. So that invitation is extended. Is this fair? Is this the best way to do it? Sure. Okay. Other than, you know, asking him. I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to communicate with him, which I don't do. So please, if you are around Saturday evening and you get word of the after party, please join us. We would love to interview you and I will break down the work that I've had how much I enjoy it, how arrogant and even cockier it's made me as a human being. And uh, that's what I got. That's good, right? Yep. Okay, great. So please join us if you are a surgeon, not an injector, going to the LAMCA. Hope I'm saying that right. I want to say LACMA, obviously. Going to the LAMCA conference let me get a different let me end on it because i think it's ah, again get oil on my because i think this is cute um please join us in my hotel room which will be professionally set up with professional people and no shenanigans don't guarantee the last part. There may be some shenanigans, but it's gonna be really fun. It won't be, is the word untoward? Let's look. We're like a little, we're like a, we're like a little vocab app for everybody. I used to have an incredible vocabulary and then I did unexpected and inappropriate or inconvenient. No untoward behavior will be going on in the hotel room. Except for the two people that I may have set up. Please look out for our surgeon interview that will be done at an untoward time for <laughs> Thank you. Have a great week. <laughs>